episode 7. We're going to be talking about some of the lesser known things today that make a huge difference in your life. Pauline's going to be talking about some of the things that can affect your credit score that you might not be aware of and I'm going to be talking about some of the lesser known insurance products that can make a difference when something happens and can also save you money in your premiums. So Pauline from the Mortgage Center, Pauline Tonkin, take it away. Hello everyone. Uh, yes, I get questions all the time about uh, credit. People ask me, well, you know, how much will credit uh, affect my ability to borrow to get a mortgage? And the answer is it makes a big difference, um, especially um, in the recent years where uh, the government has been making some changes changes to mortgage rules and lenders to become more strict with their guidelines credit is becoming a bigger bigger part of the equation so I always do encourage people to take a look at their own credit report which they can do by going online to uh, equifax.ca uh, that information is also available on my website uh, if you go to my blog post there's information there regarding what impacts your credit so there's more details there but is I will there go over some of the high people to do that Sorry, but is there a cost? Uh, n n well, uh, it, it is free to get a report. Uh, if you want to get your credit score and you want to get a full report, I believe there is a cost of about $20, but it doesn't impact your credit uh, score in any way. So I do encourage people to take a look at it if they know they're going to be making any kind of major financing decisions coming up, you know, even six months in advance, take a look at your own credit score. Or if you're comfortable and you want to talk to your mortgage broker, I certainly can pull them as well, but uh, they do pull down your credit score. Not a lot, but if you are shopping for credit, say you're looking at buying a home or car and you know you, you've gone to different lenders over a period of time that does bring your score down a bit so the fact that you can do that online yourself is a real big uh, big plus so but if people most people come to me and then they ask obviously then I have to pull credit as part of the application so uh, I just wanted to give some uh, ideas and tips about you know what how a credit report is generated and what kind of information is important so first of all for those people who do not have a lot of credit or just getting established you know young people especially or people that are newer to the country uh, you do need to get uh, credit in Canada to be able to start generating a Canadian Credit Bureau so sort of standard rule of thumb would be uh, to have two years of credit history, two, two years of, of using a credit card or a loan. So two years, $2,000 and two trade lines or two uh, um, credit cards or a loan and a credit card. So the 222 is kind of an easy way to remember it. So Certainly if we have less than that, there are things that we may be able to do, but I think that's just a general good rule of thumb is to get established. And of course, during that two-year period, it's a great time to save up for a down payment as well. So it's a good timing thing as well. So uh, then the next thing is for how does the credit report, uh, you know, viewed by the Bureau. So they will look at your, uh, obviously, how long you've had credit. They will look at how much your limits are. They will look at how um, close to those limits you are in your credit card. So for people that are maxing out their credit cards or going over their limit, because that is possible to do, especially if you've got, you know, you're maxed out and then a payment comes through, um, it will go over the limit. Those things will uh, will uh, drop your credit score quite dramatically, being close to the max and or over limit. So always try to keep your credit card balances. Obviously try to pay them off every month, that's ideal, but uh, certainly keep them below the 65% of, uh, of the maximum uh, credit amount. So if it's a thousand dollar limit, try not to go over six hundred and fifty dollars otherwise that will bring your score down when it reports. So what if someone has, say they've had two or three credit cards and they you know they get the one paid off and then they think, oh I'm just gonna cancel it so it, you know just get rid of it so it's not affecting my score anymore. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Uh, well, it, 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 it kind of depends, uh, but generally speaking, yes, if you cancel credit cards, uh, that history of how, say you've had that credit card for six years, you've had a good track record on it, all of a sudden it's no longer reporting on your bureau, and you have a credit card that's only been reporting for a year or two. So the credit bureau says that's 
that's your current information. So it sees you differently than it did before if you had that longer credit history. So you might be better off just tucking it back in a drawer and not touching it and just leaving it rather than actually counseling it. Yeah, it's certainly a good idea to, before you make any of those kinds of decisions, to discuss it with your financial planner or your or your um, your mortgage broker. Certainly for people who are going through credit counseling, credit counselors are great for um, reviewing your budget with you and uh, strategies for credit card management or to to close down accounts, that kind of thing. So it is it is important to have those conversations and be really clear before you make a rash, de rash decision, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, so the amount of credit you have available to you, um, how you're paying your credit cards in terms of if you're maxing them out or not, those are, are, are things that are considered in a credit score. In addition, obviously, late payments are a big deal. Uh, pay them on time and you'll be fine. Um, if you have collections, so if you have missed many payments and you're getting a collection letter and that then is updated on your credit bureau that you're in collections, whether that be for a credit card even for parking tickets, that's a big one. Or fitness clubs, you've registered, you paid for three years, or you've signed up for three years, you decided to stop making payments or whatever the reason might be, they go to collection and they will sit there until you pay that out, that is going to sit there and that will be an issue. So if you have any of those types of things, another reason why to pull your credit report because then you can see it on there and then you can be aware of it. A lot of people have collection letters they've received or phone calls and they ignore them. It will come back to bite you. So I always just say pay the bill even if you think that you are in the right, it is you're not going to win unfortunately, um, in most cases. So you do have to sort of get those sorted out. I mean, your credit score and your credit report is part of your identity. It's very important that you keep it in good shape because you will be rewarded for that. And also, I mean, mistakes can occur as well because, I mean, one of my friends, she, you know, couldn't get a credit card and she's like, you know, wondering why. I mean, she, you know, she had a home, she was making good money, her, she wasn't behind on any payments and she found out that years ago when she would paid off a line of credit at a bank, the bank hadn't cleared it. Yes. So she that, had to go in and talk to them and then, you know, it was immediately fixed and everything was fine. But it's like, you know, it's, it's you know, Mistakes do happen, so make sure that you pull it so things that are on there that perhaps shouldn't be and are affecting you get cleaned up. Absolutely, that does happen. Uh, sometimes registered charges against a mortgage, such as lines of credit, don't get cleared. Uh, also, people who have paid off their mortgage, the bank does not then contact the bureau or, or whoever to let them know that that's been paid out necessarily. And so uh, even registered on title, the same thing. So if people pay out their mortgage, uh, it's very important to yourself make follow up on that because it may sit there. Um, I had a client recently, they had paid off their mortgage uh, 15 years ago <laughs> and it was still sitting there because they hadn't gone back for credit or anything. So they didn't realize, right? Um, anyway, so it was still showing that they had a mortgage when in fact they didn't. So, it, it, we, you know, obviously we cleared it up quickly, but it, it just goes to show you that mistakes, you know, can be there. It, it is your identity. Do your due diligence. Check on it. Uh, on occasion and certainly when you are going to be um, you know making some major buying decisions in advance that is uh, an important part um, and obviously bankruptcy things like that are obviously a big impact on your credit score uh, so um, and other things to consider is identity theft that's a big thing right now we have had some uh, credit bureaus where other people's information because their names are similar or uh, family members banking at the same bank, the, the information gets cross-matched. You've got one person with some credit issues, the other person doesn't. So again, it is uh, obviously technology-based. It's a matter of sharing information and it being updated. Um, and that's not always going to go perfectly. So uh, that is why you need to work with professionals to make sure that, you know, you 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 know you're on top of it and that you get it fixed as soon as possible so credit scores definitely make a big difference on how much you're going to be able to borrow how much you're going to, be able to qualify for and the rate the better the better your credit score and the better chance you have to borrow more more money if that's what you want and you can afford it um, at the best rates so it is uh, prudent to take the time 
to take care of your credit because it's going to help you in the end. Yeah, and I think I would think even if you're not trying to buy anything, even if you're not looking at financing, I think you should probably check it once a year just to make sure that nothing shows up that shouldn't. Absolutely. Excellent. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. So along those lines of, you know, taking responsibility and kind of keeping track and finding out about those little things that you didn't know about, Let's face it, you know, it's like, was it over 90, 95% of people they say are living paycheck to paycheck? And if you didn't have that paycheck, uh, you're going to be in dire straits pretty soon. What happens if, you know, you, you end up in a car accident or something, you know, something happens and you can't work for the next, you know, few weeks or possibly a few months or longer? It's like, how's that going to affect your life? Disability insurance, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, it's really important and it costs way less than you think. Usually between 1% and 3% of your net income is what disability is going to cost you a month. So if you can't live off 95, 90, 97% of your income, I can guarantee you can't live off zero. And there are some ways to help keep your premium payments down. With disability, of course, you have a waiting period before you can start getting benefits, and then you have a benefit period. That's how long you're going to get your benefits. Some easy ways to keep your premium payments down is by stretching out your benefit period. Instead of having a zero days where you start getting paid as soon as you have an accident or as soon as you're off, maybe stretch it out 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. That can sometimes save you over $100 a month in premiums. And you're thinking, okay, you know, but 90 days, you know, I, I might be in trouble if I was off work for that long. I can't guarantee I'm going to be okay, especially if I have some extra, you know, extra expenses because of my injury. There's some cool little products that can fill that gap. Uh, one of them is a great one is fracture insurance. Because a high percentage of accidents that do take people out quickly and um, cause them to un be unable to work are something like an accident where you probably are going to incur a fracture. Fracture insurance costs between seven, uh, one plan is $7 a month, the other plan is $20 a month. And they pay you out a tax-free lump sum depending on the severity of your break. How the, you know, the bigger the bone, you know, if you break your, break your finger, you might get 500 bucks. If you, you know, break a femur, you're going to get a few thousand. If you have a skull fracture, you're going to get more thousands. So it's something to consider because they're easy to get and they kind of fill that buffer in between there and it just can make a huge difference. Fracture insurance is also great for kids. For $7 a month, you can make sure that if something happens to your kids that you know, you're going to get the money you need because you're going to be the one taking time off work. I'm sure, Pauline, if something happened to one of your kids, it's going to cause you time away from work and it could possibly affect your income stream. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's so, a great product. Yeah, so for $7 a month, you know, times by how many kids you have, you know, you can have that protection in place. So it's it's those little products that don't cost a lot, aren't talked about a lot, so a lot of people aren't aware of them, that can have a big impact in keeping your lifestyle going. That's the whole purpose of insurance. We're there to make sure that when bad stuff happens, you or your family have the money to be able to deal with it so life goes on and you don't suffer. And that's, you know, it's just as simple as that. So, you know, talk to your broker, ask about these little products, find out what the difference is and, you know, get some disability in place. It's not expensive. Like I said, you'd be surprised, you know, it's like, you know, yeah, there's some Cadillac plans that you can, you know, add riders and make it really expensive, but just get some protection in place, which is better than nothing. And your family and you will be protected. You'll be amazed at the peace of mind that you have. And then when, you know, if something does happen, you're okay. It's going to be all right. So that's kind of my <coughs> sorry main message for today. So you know, summer's coming, and also to make sure get your travel insurance. Uh, you know, say you might have it on your credit card. I implore you to really actually read the fine print and make sure of what you've had because in our industry we hear so many people who thought they were covered and discovered that they weren't. They were on the trip for too many days, and the insurance company wouldn't cover them for any of it. It's a very inexpensive product. I can help people out with it over the phone. Um, you can buy an annual trip to cover you for, you know, it, it, or annual uh, policy to cover you if you just cross-border shop. And it's usually like, I don't know, 50 bucks a year. 
So considering what an accident can cost if you cross a border and get in an accident um, or, be, or fall sick on a vacation, it, you, you know, it's like it's just ridiculously cheap for the protection you can get. Yeah, that's so, a great one too. Yeah, <laughs> it's you know it's it's the, that little thing that can really make a difference if something happens. You know, nobody wants anything bad to happen on vacation, but as we all know, life can throw you a curveball, and just be prepared. Excellent. Yeah. So have a great day. Enjoy the summer, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. And we'll be talking about another cool topic. Stay tuned, and we'll let you know in a couple of weeks.